Okay, so today we're going to set up an automatic watering system for these six uh, plants we've got here. So what we're going to do is we are going to water on soil moisture. And we've gone ahead and set up a drip uh, watering line using some landscaping tube. And we've got a drip head in each one of these plants. And we're terminating down here. And what we're going to try to do is get away with using one pump in our... Uh, reservoir and so we built this reservoir using Adoja's automatic feeder reservoir sub-assembly kit you can take a look at this video if you want to build one one of these guys and save yourself some money but if you don't want to build this you can purchase one of these from the store ready-made you got to purchase your device separately it doesn't come with it so you're gonna pay a little bit more money if you want to go this route especially because these guys are difficult to ship this one you got to get your own five gallon bucket you can make that work but you get all the components that come with it but we're, we're, we're gonna run with one pump and see if we can get this to work as opposed to two if we can't we'll go ahead and install another pump to get uh, the pressure we need to feed all these guys so let's get started just to recap real quick the parts that are in these guys is uh, you've got a primary pump that has a water level sensor switch glued to the top of it in the perfect position so when it triggers we can use it to tell us that uh, water's empty and to protect the pump so we don't run it dry and we've got this level switch positioned a little bit higher than this one which we're going to actually use to warn us when the water's getting low so we don't actually run out of water so we've got some warning time there and both of these here's the bottom level switch connector this is the warning level switch connector and here is the pump connector and that's pretty much it and then you've got your pump exit tube there and we have an enclosure glued on the back so this is how we ship these devices or the sub assemblies for the reservoir if you were going to purchase them as opposed to build your own so we have our reservoir set up uh, as if we would uh, have bought the completed sub assembly from the store and not the kit and so what we've done is we've put a piece of two-sided velcro and we've stuck them together inside the enclosure and we'll pull that off the sticky adhesive and we're going to go ahead and mount our board in all right so we've got our reservoir set up so all we're going to do is we're going to cut the lead coming up to our reservoir and so we want to measure it the reservoir we're going to tuck it in the corner back here keep this tube out of the light as much as possible so we we'll probably need about, let's just say this much slack to be safe. We're just going to shove our drip line into, it's a quarter inch outer diameter tube, the black tube, into a quarter inch inner diameter clear tube, which goes to our pump. And if we want to run two pumps, we'd run two of these clear tubes out and we would uh, plug the other end of this into the other pump and run a cir circle as opposed to terminating the drip line. That's one way we could do it. We're going to connect up our board. This is our lower level water level sensor switch. This is our primary water pump. We'd plug a secondary pump into that channel if we had one. Here's our warning water level sensor switch doesn't matter which way you plug this guy in either pin will work and then we've got to plug in our moisture sensor so our moisture sensor gets plugged in just like this since I've only got one moisture sensor I'm gonna put it at the end where the drip terminates if you guys were doing a, a more serious cultivation setup I, you probably want to have a couple of these devices running for redundancy that's always nice to have so you just want to go ahead and jam your moisture sensor in down down in there real good we're logged in here and boo boo is um, showing that he's got a warning error and we had a profile assigned when we booted them up already um, for what we wanted to do, but we didn't have the moisture sensor calibrated. So right now it's reading level 9, but before it was reading level 5. I want to show you what we did to calibrate them. 
to calibrate the sensor and to get a, a, a lower reading, to get a better tight uh, idea of you know low soil moisture level, instead of doing uh, dry air, I've got the soil sensor in some actually dry soil, so that's going to be a better representation of what dry soil should be like on the lower limit. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and insert it back into our plant and then just pour water on it and drench it to make sure we get a good drench soil reading as well. And we'll use that as opposed to actually putting the soil in full water. Okay, we've got our moisture sensor down in there with our uh, drip line pretty close to it. And we're just going to go ahead and pour some water all over in the sensor to make sure it gets good and saturated. And we'll use that as our, as our uh, moisture, moisture high reading, which is our low analog reading. And we'll use the reading we got here in this dry soil as our high reading or our uh, moisture level low reading. So I'll show you that in the panel right now. So let's go ahead and get into the device and take a look at them. So his calibration now is set to 750 and 400 respectively for the highs and lows. And you've got your 7-day high here. And here you've got your 7-day low. And so once we did the calibration procedure, we actually got you know these numbers. And before that low was actually set to, I believe, 250. So it, the reading it was getting was putting it at uh, a level 5. And so it actually um, was never triggering it. And in the profile, we had it set to water three times. And if it misses its target trying to get to level 9, it never could it could just get stuck at level five because of the ranges then you've got that trigger miss target error so let's get into the profile so here's motor switch channel one we set it to it run on a trigger mode and we for the test we had it set to five minutes so we could get our drip right but let's uh change that i think to two minutes so we'll go 120 seconds and we'll deploy that uh we could uh assign a motor switch two if we were going to run two pumps and, you know, we'd put it in a group together if we wanted to do that. Here's where we would do it. Um, right here, we would just uh, assign the second pump and put it on a trigger as well and just put them in the same group. But for our first water level sensor switch, this is the switch that's sitting on top of the pump right here that we plugged into pull-up channel one. We give it a message water empty for an alert. We enabled that alert. And we're going to protect pin 16, which is our 12-volt water pump. Um, so when it triggers, it's going to prevent the pump from running, which is going to prevent it from burning out. So let's deploy that, make sure that's good. And then water level sensor switch number two is our warning water level sensor switch, which tells us the water's getting low. So all we have is an alert enabled, that enabled there. And for the analog moisture sensor, what we're going to do is just set a trigger. We're going to trigger the pump. And we're going to trigger moisture level, we're going to have it water on moisture level 7, and we're going to target 9. And we're going to try to water up to 3 times to hit our target again. Okay, so here we are with Boo Boo. He has cleared his air. We reset him and then let him check in during his check-in interval after he reset and the air is now cleared. He's hanging out at moisture level 8. We can actually come in if we wanted to and check out his 24-hour data. We don't have much. We've just got a little bit of time here, and we can kind of see his moisture level. It's kind of shifted because we did a calibration, but we started out pretty much near 10 when we calibrated it and we drenched it, and now it's kind of just kind of leveling out. We have our device programmed, he's booting up. Um, you guys could put uh, airstone in here if you want, but the way we've got this set up, we're gonna be actually adding water to the reservoir every couple days, so we're not too worried about the water getting stagnant um, with as much as we're gonna be watering these guys. Okay, it's pumping now. You guys can see it. Now let's get over to our drip heads over here and make sure they're all dripping. Oh yeah, we could do six plants easily. We could probably do more with one pump. That's awesome. So you might want to get multiple heads to space out the watering. But we're running one pump, six plants easily. See if we can loosen some of these heads to get a better flow. Alternatively, you guys can replace these drip lines with whatever you want. Just keep in mind if you're going to increase the flow significantly, you might need two pumps. But uh, this six plant setups working great with one pump so uh, we could easily run a dozen plants with dual pumps that's pretty awesome and this is going to let us know when the reservoir water gets low when the reservoir water gets empty if we wanted we could monitor temperature in the reservoir 
We could use digital outputs to trigger lighting. This is just an example how easy it is to get set up with an automatic Peter Reservoir sub-assembly kit from Adosia. You guys could have a pretty good uh, personal cultivation set up. Thanks for, uh, you know, always giving us, uh, you know, tips of what you guys are finding out. Uh, we can push remote updates and we make these guys better and smarter, so, um, you know, our customers are invaluable in that sense. So let us know what we can do next for you, and um, we appreciate you. Like, comment, subscribe, and grab your IoT devices if you haven't already.